Hi, this is Brittany from Hand to Mind. This is our second grade teach at home math video series. This is week four, day five. Has anybody ever given you more than one instruction at one time? So has anyone ever said, and this was just said in my house, go pick up your shoes and go put them in your closet? That's more than just one step. That's two steps. Well, when we problem solve, there are times where we might have more than just one step. It could be two steps. So we're gonna learn today, how can we organize our information so that we make sure that we solve the first step and then solve the second step? So come join me today as we learn about two-step problem solving. So we're gonna begin first with a problem that doesn't have any numbers. So what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and picture what you hear me saying in your mind. So here's the problem. Henry went on a car ride on Saturday. On Sunday, he went further than he did on Saturday. Open your eyes. What did you picture in your mind? What, you, what picture do you have? My picture was that I thought about somebody on Saturday went on a car ride. And so I'm thinking they're, they're driving down the road. I don't know how far they went. I just know they went on a car ride. And then I hear on Sunday that they went on a car ride, but this time they went further than they did on Saturday. Again, not sure how far they went, but I do know that it was a longer ride on Sunday than it was on Saturday. That's what I have in my mind. So let's see how the story will change. Henry went on a 56 mile car ride on Saturday. On Sunday, he went 27 miles further than he did on Saturday. How did the story change? Well, now that car ride that I was thinking about, I know now on Saturday, they went for a 56 mile car ride. On Sunday, they went 27 miles further. So they went, whatever they did on Saturday, plus 27 more miles. That's what I, that's what I see in my head now. So what question could we ask? Well, I could ask, how many miles he went on Sunday, but I'm gonna ask this question. How many miles did Henry ride in the car over the weekend? Because Saturday and Sunday are considered the weekend, so how many miles did they run on Saturday or Sunday? So to do this problem, we're going to use an organizer to help us organize this. And we're gonna think about this in steps. So, what we have to think about is who or what is it about? And we visualize that it's about Henry in a car, right? Henry in a car on a ride. And what do we know? Well, we know that on Saturday, we know that on Saturday, he went for a car ride that was 56 miles. Then what do we know about Sunday? We know on Sunday... He went on a car ride that was 27 miles further. So we know he went the 56 miles that they did on Saturday, but he also went 27 more miles. Now, the question is, how much did he go over the weekend? So do we have enough information here to be able to figure out the weekend first? No, we've got to figure out Sunday first because we don't know how much Sunday is. We just know that he went 56 and 27 miles further. So that's going to be step one. We're going to find out the total number for Sunday. So we need to find out if I put 56 and 27 together, how many total miles that is to give us Sunday before we can find the weekend. So how would you add 56 plus 27? Hmm. Well... 
I might add 56 plus 27 by doing something like this. So I could start at 56, I could add four to get to 60, and then I would still have 23, 23 more, yeah. Still have 23 more to add, and so that would give me to 83. So, 83 miles for Sunday. And I know that's 27 because four and 23 is 27. So yeah, so 83 miles is for Sunday. So now I figured out that on Sunday, he, 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 he rode for 83 miles. So step two is now gonna be to try to figure out the weekend. Well, what do we know? We know Saturday he did 56 miles, and we know Sunday he did 83 miles. So now we're looking for the total number of miles for the weekend, because this is gonna give our weekend miles. So 56 plus 83. Now how might we find that? What's a way that we could do? Huh, I'm thinking I could just split these up into 50 and six and 80 and three. Do I know what 50 plus 80 is? Yeah, five tens plus eight tens is 13 tens, which is 130. And six plus three is nine, which is 139 miles. So I found, figured out that he, for the weekend, rode 139 miles. What we just did was what's a, called a two-step problem. Step one, we didn't have all the information we needed to be able to find what the question was asking. So we had to do that first. We had to find Sunday first. We had some, but we didn't have all of it. Then step two, we had all the information so now we could solve the problem. So let's try another one. What about this one? Baxter Elementary had a canned food drive. The second graders collected some cans. The first graders collected fewer cans. Hmm. Do you have a picture in your mind what just happened? So I'm wondering. Baxter Elementary had a canned food drive, the second graders collected some cans, and the first graders collected fewer cans. Well, I've had a canned food drive, so I'm thinking second graders, so the second graders collected some cans. Do we know how many cans? Nope, not right now we don't. But I do know something about the first graders. What do I know about the first graders? They're fewer. So what does that mean? That means they collected less. I know they collected less, I just don't know how much. But this gives me a nice idea of what the picture in my head is. So let's keep reading and see if we see if we get more information. Baxter Elementary had a canned food drive. The second graders collected 48 cans. The first graders collected 19 fewer cans. Hmm. Okay, so here's what I got now. Second graders, I know they collected 48 cans, total cans. My first graders, I know they collected fewer cans and I know how much fewer they collected. It says they collected 19 fewer cans. I still don't know what those first graders are, right? So, what question could I ask? Well, a question I could ask is how many, how many cans did first grade collect? But what if I asked this question? How many cans did second and first grade collect? Huh. Well, if I did that, if I asked how many cans did second and first grade collect, then I've got to organize my information again and see what I need to figure out. So we know this is about a canned food drive. It's canned food drive. And we know it's about first and second grade. 
and we know that second grade collected 48 cans, and first grade collected fewer, and we know that that fewer is 19 cans. That's what we know. Now, do we have all the information right now so we can figure out how many second and first grade collected? No, because we don't know how many first grade collected yet, do we? So we have to find that first. So I have to decide what equation could I use for this? Some of you may be going, well, you could do 48 and you could subtract 19. That is a way to do that. And that's a pretty good way because I'm thinking I could go 48, 19 is really close to 20, so I'm just gonna remove 20. And that's gonna get me to 28, but that's one too many. So I'm at 29, so 29 cans. So now I know that first grade collected 29 cans. Now can I finish the, can I solve the rest of it? Now can I figure out second and first grade? Yeah, I can, I can because now I know that second grade collected 48 cans, right? And I know that first grade collected how many? 29 cans. And now can I figure out first and second grade? Yeah. So I can put together 48 plus 29. And so that might look something like this. I start at 48. I'm gonna jump 30 to get me to 78. That's one too many, 77. So 77 cans. So I know that at Baxter Elementary, first and second grade put together, collected a total of 77 cans. That's a really nice way of thinking about your two-step problems, is breaking it down into the steps and thinking, what information do I have first? What do I need to figure out first? And then going to the next one. So we're gonna do an activity, a different type of activity of what's called what went wrong. So we're gonna look at a problem and y'all are gonna determine what went wrong with this problem, okay? So let's read this problem and then I want you to figure out what you think went wrong. So I'm telling you right now, this is not the right answer and your job is to figure out why. Libby had 56 seashells. She gave 14 to her friend Liz and 25 to her friend Sarah. How many shells does she have left? So take a look and see how it was solved and see if you can figure out what went wrong. So how many of you saw that she figured out after she started with 56 and she removed the 14 and she got 42. That's what she got. But is that how many she had left? No, because what happened? She forgot to subtract her 25. So now she has 42 and she's gonna remove 25 so we have to figure that out. So can we help her do that? Yeah, so we can start at 42 and we could remove 20 and that's gonna get our 22. And then we just have five more. So two's 20 and three more is 17. So how many seashells should she have had left? She should have had 17 shells left. So this was an example of where they did one step, but forgot the second step. So we have to be careful when we do two-step problems that we make sure that we've used all the information and we're answering the question that was asked. If you'd like to practice this more, please go to handdomine.com where you can find more activities that will reinforce this skill. Hope you all have a great rest of the day.